In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day 
when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exultation. So let us also, gathered together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again, revealed in glory. Today, the Feast of the Presentation is also called Candle Mass Day because it's the day that we traditionally bless the candles used in church. Because in his prophecy, Simeon called Jesus the light of the Gentiles. And so Christ is the light of the world for us, who illumines our heart, our spirit, our conscience. So we ask the Lord to bless these candles. O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man Simeon the light for revelation to the Gentiles. We humbly ask that in answer to your people's prayers, you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles, which we use in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue, we may reach that light which never fails. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am ascending my messenger to, to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? 
and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refine them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way that he might be merciful and faithful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's always a joy to be with you, even a greater joy to pray with you, and the best joy of all to celebrate Mass together, which is the ultimate prayer of the Church. And we gather today in this beautiful feast of the presentation. It's always remarkable to me how many times I read or hear a particular scripture passage, even dozens of times, perhaps even hundreds of times, and we're still able to discover something new within that narrative. And so it struck me not long ago in reading this passage about the presentation, there's nowhere in it where God says that the Christ will come into the temple as a baby. God promises Simeon simply that he will see the Christ before he dies. But that's it. It doesn't give a description of what the Christ will look like or what form uh, the Messiah will take, simply that he will see him before he dies. So what must have Simeon surmised? Maybe he thought the Christ would come as a mighty king immediately recognizable by his power and his pomp. Or maybe the Christ would come as a mighty warrior, impressive in his strength and his might. But we know that the Christ comes as this little baby. And so how fitting it is that this Feast of the Presentation is the ultimate closing out of the Christmas season in which we have pondered the wonder of the Word made flesh. 
that in Jesus Christ, the universal, mysterious, all-powerful, invisible God has taken upon himself our flesh. And as the second reading reminds us, is completely identified with us in every way, with the exception of sin, in order to redeem us, in order to save us from inside our own human condition. And so Mary and Joseph, externally perhaps not that noticeable, come into the temple holding this light of the world, the savior of the human race, the one upon whom all of human history pivots. And Simeon, through the grace of the Holy Spirit, recognizes the Christ and holds him and calls him the light of the Gentiles. In the gospel, I find many astonishing things. Here's another one. In John's gospel, Jesus says that he is the light of the world. In Matthew's gospel, he says that, that you, we, are the light of the world. We who follow Jesus as disciples. Isn't that absolutely astonishing that what Jesus says about himself, he says about us? When I think of the difference between Jesus and me, how could he ever apply anything that he says about himself to me? And yet, through grace, through the power of the sacraments, through the holiness that comes to us in the mystery of the church and the power of revelation, Christ calls us to be an extension of his light and his presence in the world. And so light has always been a primordial symbol of God. In the Middle Ages, when the church moved from Romanesque architecture to Gothic, we discovered the beauty and power of light. Romanesque had to build thick, thick walls in order to support the roof of the cathedrals, and therefore Romanesque cathedrals and churches were dark. With the discovery of the flying buttress, they were able to make the walls higher and thinner and fill them with stained glass. Think of the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. And so light is a symbol of God because we see everything because of light, and yet we cannot see light itself. We know when there is light because we see everything, but, but pure light is impossible for us to grasp, but we see everything illuminated by it. And so in this life, we cannot directly see God in his essence, but we come to see everything in light of God. And so for us to be light of the world means that we are called to live and speak and act in such a way that, that we provide illumination to others, to your little brothers and sisters, your classmates, your friends, your parents, come to a deeper understanding of who God is because they see God operative in you and in me. That radiance that shines out from Christ has been planted within us. And so we're called to shine in this world that is so often filled with darkness. It's why the saints have halos around them. Because when we come into the presence of a person who is truly holy, is there not a radiance, a light that shines from that person? That this energy of the Holy Spirit, this effervescence of God himself. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit then that we acknowledge Christ today as the light of the world, as the light of our lives, as the very meaning of human history, as the one who is our savior and redeemer. And we pledge ourselves to be an extension of that light, to be fully consumed in our service of Christ. I always think of the, the sanctuary lamp. Sanctuary lamp burns itself out, completely consumes itself to proclaim that Christ is present in the blessed sacrament. Is that not a great symbol for our life? To be completely consumed to proclaim the presence of Christ. Whatever path life takes you, that's our common vocation. And today we rejoice in the immensity of Christ's love for us and his confidence in us. That if we are faithful to him, he will use us to do great things.
indeed to extend the light into this world and to stand with Mary at the foot of the cross and to proclaim the resurrection. That is our vocation. With confidence in God's mercy and power, we voice our petitions. For Bishop Hine, as the shepherd of the Diocese of Madison, that his work and sacrifice would bear great fruit for the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our priests, deacons, teachers, catechists, parents, and all who hand on the Catholic faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to the love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all students and young people, especially in our Catholic schools, that they may hold fast to their faith in the midst of an everlasting, ever-challenging culture, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the Go Make Disciples initiative and for an increase in desire for the discipleship among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially from the coronavirus pandemic, and all who mourn the loss of loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for a new physical home for St. Ambrose Academy, through the intercession of St. Joseph, with thanksgiving for the generosity of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we honor your Son today as the light of the world. Help us to live in this world as your new creation, that we may refract that light to those around us. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of the Holy Church. May the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation. And with the angels and saints praise you, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ambrose, St. Thomas Aquinas, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof. You say the word, and my soul shall be you.
Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite those students who are making a consecration to the Blessed Mother to come forward at this time uh, for the blessing of your miraculous medal. St. Louis de Montfort articulated beautifully what the consecration to the Blessed Mother looks like and the details of how to do it. And he would say that consecration to Mary is a most excellent way to renew our baptismal promises and to live them out. So by consecrating yourself to the Blessed Mother, you're saying that you want to be fully Christian, fully a disciple of Christ, serving and loving God, living out the fullness of the church's teaching and the power and truth of the gospel. And so to make this consecration is not an inconsequential or light matter. It's a serious commitment to, to fully live out what began on the day of your baptism. So we praise God that he has stirred within your heart uh, this great desire uh, to live your life. You're totally consecrated to Christ. And so we ask the Lord to bless these medals and to bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask the powerful intercession of the Blessed Mother of God upon these young people as they make their consecration to her. We ask that they may live their lives I'm fully in love with Christ, serving the church, living out their respective vocation, and becoming the saint that you have called them to be. Protect them from all sin, all evil, all that could harm them, that they may radiate the light of Christ and come at last to the joy of heaven. And we ask this blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It was 42 years ago, just last week, that St. John Paul II visited Mexico for the very first time. Very first time that a pope had ever gone to Mexico. And his visit just electrified the country. Millions of Mexicans came out to see him and to pray with him. It was at the very beginning of his pontificate. At the end of the trip, he goes to the airport in Mexico City to fly back to Rome. There's about 500,000 people gathered all around the airport to say goodbye. It's a brilliant sunny day, brilliant Mexican day. And as his plane took off, everybody that came to that field had brought a little mirror with them. And as his plane took off into the sky, they lifted their mirror up to the sun. So when he looked down, all that he saw was this ocean of light. I can't help but think that's a beautiful image of what we're called to be and to do, to lift our life to the sun, the S-O-N, the Son of God, and to refract his light to the world. As we go forth from this Mass, we pray for that grace, to be a refraction of that holy light of Christ. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Take